Oh, great. Okay, welcome to today's webinar on room service in real time, a visual tour and discussion of room service at Self Regional Hospital, presented by Bill Klein, Mike Melander, and Lori Kent. My name is Kyle Witte, and I'll be your moderator today. I want to thank all of you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to learn more about room service. We hope you enjoy yourselves and learn a great deal. First, I would like to introduce to you our presenters. Bill Klein is the president and CEO of DMNA. Mike Melander is the director of sales for healthcare food service systems at the Seaboard Group. And Lori Kent is the general manager at, of dietary at Self Regional Hospital. Now I will turn it over to our presenters. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, this is Mike Melander. Uh, as Kyle mentioned, this this uh, webinar is room service in real time. It was it's actually a webinar that we did at our user group conference in Atlanta this last October, and it was extremely well received. And I think I'm hoping that you uh, you feel the same at the end. Um, the the idea was to give you a, a visual tour, as it says. Uh, we had never really done that in any of these webinars. Really taken the room service process and gone on site and and shown. Uh, pictures of the various stages of uh, the room service process. So uh, that was our goal, and uh, we'll jump right into it. Uh, the, um, so, um, <coughs> we go. so uh, at Self Regional Hospital or Healthcare, uh, this really uh, came down to a partnership between um, Self uh, and DMA and Seaboard. Uh, in order to um, make their room service operation uh, successful. And it takes all three components uh, to do that. So, Bill, I'm going to have you uh, talk a little bit about a special offer we have during the webinar. Thank you, Mike. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as it says in the slide, uh, we're going to offer a uh, scholarship, or actually five scholarships, uh, for those folks at the end of the uh, webinar uh, you'll see the email address for me to email your answers to. And the first five folks who uh, answer correctly to the two questions I will pose at the end, which is garnered from information shared during the webinar, uh, will be afforded a $1,000 scholarship to the Good to Best Conference uh, in San Diego. And one point I wanted to make too, Bill, uh, I understand that uh, if you don't win the contest, uh, if you are interested in coming and are interested in a, a scholarship, please uh, reach out to myself or to DMA and 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 communicate that, and there may be additional scholarships available. That's correct, Mike. Thank you. Yep, you bet. So, Lori, um, talk a little bit about self-regional health care, please. Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, I want to say good afternoon to everyone. Um, I have been... Uh, working in healthcare food service for about 25 years. Um, here at Self Regional, we are a tertiary care hospital in a rural setting. Uh, as it says on the screen, we, we are a 414 acute care bed facility. We do about 3,000 meals a day. Our average census is 190. Um, we also have three retail operations, and we are getting ready to open our fourth retail operation in early February and we do all the vending here as well. Uh, we implemented or went live with room service in November of 2011, and it was a very <coughs> successful project. Uh, my team and staff and, uh, and others in the hospital love the innovation and technology that we gain from implementing this. And we also have benefited from many good things. Um, of course, our patient satisfaction increased um, we get so many positive comments from the patients, it's just unbelievable. Um, my employee satisfaction has improved, the teamwork has improved in the department. I think each employee has found their niche and that has made them happier. We've seen some maturity in their behavior and everyone is very happy. Um, it's also very cost effective, our food cost decreased as well as our paper cost. And one benefit that I gained from that I'm very happy about is um, my productivity has gotten better because I can now flex staff based on patient census. It's much easier to send one or two employees home uh, when the census drops. So if I'm looking much better on my productivity. 
And of course, it's green because you are washing less dishes and using less chemicals. And we also gained additional space in our storerooms because our inventory shrank. So many good things from room service. Terrific. Lori, Lori can you share um, where your patient satisfaction started before uh, we started room service and where it is today? Uh, I'd be happy to. When we started room service, we were with HCAPS, and our score was around 69, and as of last week, we were at 100. Would you repeat that number, please, as we show that was very clear? <laughs> yes. Um, when we started with room service, our HCAPS overall score was 69, and as of last week, we were at 100, which is a number no. that everybody loves. That's a great number, easy to remember. <laughs> yes, very easy. Well, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Lori. That was and it was terrific information about the the benefits. So let's jump into that uh, the visual tour. And this this just shows a, a patient in a bed looking at uh, that room service menu. And it really room service is all about offering patients uh, choices. And uh, as we as we go through the uh, uh, webinar today, you're going to see that. Seaboard's room service choice software offers the most flexibility as far as patient selection. We offer a, a call center um, uh, offering as well as a bedside ordering with an iPad or a tablet or a laptop. And, and those orders can be, those bedside orders can either be on demand uh, and printed immediately down in the kitchen or queued for uh, delivery later uh, or in even a tray line fashion if, if need be. So uh, let's start talking a little bit about how that menu was uh, developed, and, and uh, Bill, I'll let you talk about that. Thank you. Um, yeah, the, one of the major obstacles uh, from folks not achieving um, the wonderful score of 100, or at least the 90th percentile, uh, is that a lot of individual facilities create their own menus um, from gathering information from their peers in other parts of the country. And those facilities may already have been um, mature in their room service program, meaning that they've probably been in room service at least six months before they start making changes. And in creating the menu, starting off with a basic menu, um, uh, is, is a critical first step uh, in creating a successful room service platform. Uh, the reason for that basic menu, uh, which Lori started with, is that the staff are going from one cooking modality to another, so we have to make it easy for them. Um, and then the rest of the department, the, uh, the call center, diet office, if you will, nursing, everyone else has to be aware of um, the, the menu selections and how it's going to translate for all the different diets. Um, so coming out with a very um, a fancy menu or too many choices at the beginning is uh, not advantageous uh, for a well-designed facility menu. So going basic uh, with the basic home style, comfort foods, which patients expect and really look for is key, and then further customizing it uh, down the road. Um, Lori, when you designed your menu, um, and that has been a number of months ago, um, mm -hmm. what have you done, what have you added on that have made it more personal, more regional, or more local? Yeah, um, yes, you're right. We did start with a basic menu, and starting with a basic menu did allow us to add a few regional items, and of course we're located in the southeast. Um, we added Steak Diane. That was something that we had on our other uh, menu, tray line menu, before we went to room service. And um, we added catfish, uh, collard greens, cornbread dressing, peach cobbler, that's a huge hit, and red velvet cake. Those, those were some of the regional items that we did add. Yeah, that's very important. Uh, certainly there's a cost to doing that, starting off with a printed menu at the beginning and having to ditch that for a new menu, but it's certainly worth the cost in the age that we're living in with HCAP scores, which if you're not already familiar with it at your facility, uh, you need to talk with your administrator about, you know, how that's going to become uh, a living, breathing entity at your hospital and what you can do to contribute to a positive score, even though HCAPs have no food question now, food does contribute to a positive overall experience. Now on the menu, it's very important that um, we don't uh, put in the wrong size font. Both the font selection and the size of the font is important when you consider the demographics of who we're serving. Not everybody is a maternity patient, 
So we have folks who are 60 some odd years old, re reading glasses. So we have to make sure they can read it, and read it easily. So fancy fonts, while they look nice, um, we need to consider the demographics and the folks that we're serving. Um, and um, it's important that the menu, when it's laid out, you can see that we have black and, and blue on here, and they are uh, easy to read and discern. Uh, it's important that we also don't put in too many graphics, meaning pictures of food cluttering up the page, uh, which takes away the ability to have a, the proper size font. And as you can see, uh, Mike, with the lady's finger pointing to the heart shape, um, using uh, a number of metrics, or not sorry, metrics, a number of um, tools, either the heart, the heart healthy, off to the far right, there is a, a one carb next to chicken tenders. Uh, there's also the use of a salt shaker, which is not listed here, but there's a number of uh, visuals that are used for teaching moments for patients on their menus to know what's good for their diet, uh, both in the patient uh, at the hospital as well as when they discharge. Yeah, and to, and to add to that, Bill, um, in the last month or so, my my team and I have gotten together, and we're thinking about adding a few more regional items now that my uh, production staff has really perfected uh, all of the menu items on their, um, that they're working with. Um, we are considering adding uh, baked sweet potato and chicken pot pie. And, and we do take advantage of the holidays and offer specials to our patients on the holidays as well. That's why you're at the 100 level. Yep. <laughs> Great point. And, and uh, I know, Bill, we, uh, Bill and Lori, we talked yesterday about the fact start, starting with a basic menu allows your production staff to get to the point where they can, where you can add additional items because now they're yeah. comfortable with it and the, the, uh, using metrics to, to show how fast the, the uh, trays are getting out of the kitchen can help you gauge whether or not it's time to do that or not. Yeah, that's correct. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about the call center. Bill, do you want to start here? Mm -hmm. uh, in the call center, um, there's two ways of going about this that we, we sponsor, uh, one of which is the standard call center, which is uh, uh, constant throughout the United States at this point, and that requires, uh, as you see in the right-hand panel, the gal sitting at a desk. It's important to have barriers between them with a cloth, uh, which these don't have, but a cloth barrier between the uh, call center ladies or men uh, to absorb sound so they can talk quietly. Headphones are important, a large screen is important, and, you know, it goes so without saying, but a very comfortable chair is important too. Um, the, uh, the use of headsets, the uh, mouse or touch screens are also important, uh, but more than all these basic <clears throat> items I've mentioned, uh, it's important that the folks who are selected to be the call center represent uh, a positive and caring, uh, empathetic voice uh, to a patient. They're patient. Uh, they have a happy-sounding voice um, uh, it, that goes overlooked many times. And when the sick patient calls down, they need somebody to be patient with them. They may be struggling uh, with their menu in their hand, with tubes in their arms. Very important that we have that positive sound because this is the first impression that the patients will have of food services. Before they see the first tray, uh, this is the first contact they'll have with food services. Uh, and so that call center person <clears throat> can set the stage for a very positive relationship, which, of course, can contribute to getting a very high Prescani score, Gallup score, Picker score, and eventually those all contribute to an HCAP score. Remember, there's upwards of 12 touch times with patients both verbal and face-to-face and, and -face visual. Uh, having a good script or what we like to call engagement standards is critical to creating that positive relationship. So the way that the folks answer the phone, the lead-in statement they make to that person, as well as when they end the call, sets the stage for a, a patient who has um, confidence in what we're doing and knows that we care about them. And, and generally we recommend uh, one call center assistant for approximately every 60 to 70 patients. Is that, uh, is that still the case, Bill? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, we usually start off between 65 and 75, but as uh, Lori mentioned with the uh, culinary staff getting very good at their menu and they can take on more uh, challenging culinary pursuits, the staff in the office also get very good at starting a call, and it's very challenging to end a phone call 
uh, so they become proficient. They can get faster at their work, which, of course, can be measured by the uh, software uh, to determine how many calls a person can take during that meal period, and you can graph and, and monitor how efficient uh, an employee is if they're hitting the, the main uh, number, which is 60 to 70, or are they getting more efficient with their uh, with their um, ability to take calls and get patients on and off the phone. Yeah, and Bill, I, I would like to quickly add that we've always had a hostessing program here, and our patients have always adored our hostesses. But I would like to share that with this call center, our patients have fallen in love with our call center associates. <laughs> and want them to come up and see them. They want to meet them in person. So oh, it's, that's terrific. it's great as far as uh, patient services and that patient satisfaction goes. Yes. It's been you wonderful. start off with the uh, benefit of having a, uh, a hostess program in place, so the transition to room service was much easier. Many yeah. folks out there in, uh, in the listening land today don't have that benefit. They're on static tray line um, without that benefit. So... Um, Again, some of these the tools and ideas can help them make that, that transition quickly mm -hmm. from tray line to a room service environment. And, and one, one last comment about this, the call center, is that on screen, uh, the reason that the assistants can, can take those uh, orders so quickly is that all the information they need relative to that patient is, is right there on the screen. Uh, their diet order, any allergy information, whether or not they're uh, on insulin, uh, any clinical notes from the dietitians, and, of course, all the compliances for all the foods that are being offered on the menu. So they can very quickly see which foods can be ordered and which foods can't be ordered. And as they're taking those orders, the nutrition is being tallied. So if they are on a particular diet plan or uh, counting carbohydrates, uh, we can be advising them and, and as Bill mentioned, you know, uh, have a teachable moment where we help educate the patient right in the call center. Mm -hmm. So I think we should keep uh, moving on along a little bit. And I'll talk a little bit about this uh, screen. This is the, uh, this is, uh, the uh, opening screen for room service choice, and what it, what it does is highlight two, two manners of taking orders. One is called menu select and the other is called on-demand. The on-demand is the uh, call center model. The menu select uh, model is the one you're viewing on the screen there where somebody is actually at the bedside taking that patient's room service order. And, and really the screen that they're using is the same screen in effect that you have down in the call center. So the, all the information that I mentioned previously in the uh, relative to diet, comp you know, the compliances, diet orders, allergies, all those things, that same information is available to that person at the bedside. Uh, and it's, so it's, it's really a very uh, efficient and a very um, uh, patient safety uh, conscious way of, of uh, uh, taking that order. Um, Bill or Lori, did you have any Comment about I do. this. I know, Lori, you take uh, orders for some patients with a tablet at the bedside yeah, or, a, or a laptop, rather. Right, a laptop. We use room service to sit. So if a patient wants to uh, participate in room service but, um, you know, may not have their glasses and can't read the menu or call down, then we will send call center associates up during their downtime, and they can take the patient's order right next to the bedside with their laptop. Bill, no. did you Yes, I do. Um, as I mentioned, the prior screen about the, you know, the, the standard in America is a call center with folks um, um, staying in the call center pretty much taking the orders. Um, with the advent of uh, affordable health care and continual cost pressures on food service leadership, um, there is another plan that uh, we uh, have championed with the board is the no call center approach essentially having a, um, a reduced FTE complement because we're going to have, instead of the, um, instead of having the staff in the diet office, we're going to have them roaming the floors, but they're going to own a uh, number of patients in the hospital, and they'll be seeing them and maintaining their presence on the floor. We'll still have a token uh, person in the uh, call center for anybody who still wants to call down that we can't get to right away since we are on the floor, but making that face-to-face uh, -face contact with the patients, we're able to decrease the amount of FDEs uh, in, in the call center environment um, by total numbers. Even though we have some folks in the chairs and some folks roaming, we can actually take more orders on the floor 
because we can take some pre-orders on the floor face-to-face, -face, create that empathetic relationship with the patient, and do things for them that we might not be able to because the, uh, the phone is ringing um, behind us. We're leveraging the technology that's out there, as Mike mentioned, and you can see it in the picture. Um, taking those orders bedside uh, is a sure way of uh, creating that very, very high patient satisfaction relationship um, that we wouldn't otherwise have. But some leadership uh, I've talked to in America um, uh, are concerned about the absence of the bedside person and the cold, uh, impersonal nature of a call center while Lori is having great results. Uh, that's, of course, because she got into it with great people and prior training. So the no-call center approach um, is, um, I believe, the way forward for hospital operators, even with existing call centers, to reduce FTEs um, from taking some of those folks and putting them on the floors. We are able to actually reduce at a thousand bed hospital, reduce the call center by this approach, and the overall FTEs are able to take out about three FTEs out of the entire uh, staffing complement by going uh, with this process and this software uh, onto the floor. Hmm. Thank this you, uh, new call center uh, idea and approach and technology we are working with uh, will be discussed at length at the Good to Best conference. Great. Thanks, Bill. Uh, I, I put, Laurie and Bill, I actually put this slide in uh, this morning, but in our, we just released a new version of our software, 9.17.00, and I just wanted to call attention to the fact that we've, we've added a column to the, this is the search dis, uh, display on this, uh, on this room service assist uh, model, and, uh, and in the, in the call center as well, but, what it does is let you know if a diet order has changed. And so in this case, um, as you can see by the clock indicator, this patient is called, uh, uh, we call this a hold and fire order where somebody has placed an order but they don't want it delivered right away. We're holding it. And in that situation, if the diet order changes, it would impact uh, it could impact the compliances of the foods that were ordered. And so it gives us an alert right on the screen to know that we, we um, have to recontact this patient to retake that order. So I just wanted to quickly uh, point that out. But that's available in the latest release of uh, the software. Mm -hmm. So, Bill, let's jump to the – we're about a third of the way through here, and we're not quite mm -hmm. a third of the way through our slides. So um, this is uh, the – go ahead, Bill. All right, well, um, now that we've taken the orders either by the call center or by the bedside, um, the order will be transmitted electronically down to the uh, kitchen and to the uh, tray makeup area. Uh, usually there's uh, one at the hot station, one at the cold station, and one on the ex better side. Uh, each person is going to get their order on the hot and cold side, uh, specific to the items that they're responsible for. Um, the uh, positioning of those printers is very important because we're using thermal paper to keep them away from heat uh, because that does affect the, uh, the, uh, the condition of the paper. Um, the production stations get the items that are specific to them. Uh, they're all numbered to ensure that each one um, uh, can stay in sync with the order so that we don't have a hot food item going up first and a cold food item dragging behind. So they're firing those out and getting them up in unison. Um, and the tray makeup um, gets a master list so they can make sure that all the ingredients the patient has asked for from um, chicken breast through a hot sauce is all represented on the tray. Now, on this slide, uh, it's important uh, for in a room service environment to have um, the equipment positioned carefully and correctly all where it needs to be. The line design and placement of the piece of equipment are critical uh, to the success of the program. Uh, efficiency um, and uh, the culinary staff um, are driven by the place of the equipment and the selection of the equipment. Beware of design, uh, designers who have no actual culinary or kitchen working experience. Um, they may not be aware and up to date on all the technology that's available in, um, in room service equipment. Cold drawers being on both sides of the line, both the culinary side and the tray makeup side. That is a cutting-edge piece that's not represented out there uh, in great numbers, but it is available and it is the right way to go because it diminishes the amount of uh, air curtains that the tray makeup folks need. Hot holding chambers built into the cook side 
versus having a hot box down the far end of the line makes it much more efficient because there's a lot more time when the cooks are not busy and we don't want them walking back and forth down the line. The line needs to be designed very ergonomically. Uh, the work table distance, meaning uh, not represented here by the brown uh, work uh, cutting board that the chef is working on, but on the excavator side, which we'll see on the next couple of slides, that line between the rollers, if you're using those, and the counter where they're grabbing for the food needs to be considered for depth. Too much of a depth over 36 inches, we prefer a bit less than that because the average employee um, in the kitchen is about five foot um, something. I just thought I'd give them a quick look at that, Bill, while you were talking about it. Yes. Uh, this line was made shorter and narrower so that that person can reach across without stretching because if you're stretching for 120 trays three times or at least two times a day on your shift, that will cause a back strain over time. So those small ergonomic modifications can make a huge difference in the, uh, the way that the staff operate and their appreciation for the, uh, the program that we've now put them into. Um, <clears throat> uh, hot holding. We're looking at a hot holding area. Um, it's important that the hot holding is limited to items that can be held well for short periods of time. We do not overproduce uh, products for that line. We're looking for um, maybe 20 minutes sitting in the, in the hot well. We don't use hot wells. We use a technology that's called dry wells, so we're not putting uh, cooked food into a steam line that's then continuing to cook the food. It's dry well technology. You can contact me later, and I can explain that and how that works. Using smaller pans, whether they're four inches or two inches, whether they're six pans or quarter pans, uh, to make sure that we do not uh, allow the staff to overproduce uh, foods because that line that you're looking at right now has a graph or a, um, a, uh, a schematic that tells the staff every day this is how it should be set up so they can't put in a deeper or bigger pan, and therefore the food quality can uh, be degraded. Now, important to have uh, the correct portion control uh, equipment in place and utilized and verified because we are looking to uh, sell administration on uh, room service as a cost savings measure for food waste. As Lori mentioned, it's also green because we're not throwing all kinds of food into the waste stream again and making sure we have the right utensils in place important. Uh, also, that allows for good product rotation if we're having less food uh, residing on the line and, um, and um, degrading over time. Even in a steamless environment, it will degrade. Uh, the rear of the line, uh, before, the slide before was the, uh, the cook's table. On the rear of the line, uh, that's where the action is. Uh, rapid cook ovens are very important, and they can be used for very specific products. For, for example, cooking pizzas, cooking chicken, cooking fish in a very, very quick environment, not having to reside on a or rely on a uh, combi oven that will take a bit too long, considering we only have 45 minutes from the time the order is taken to the time it's delivered. There are very, very tight time constraints, so the correct equipment on the cooking side is very important. Uh, a, the right size grill. Um, I've been in facilities where the grills were six foot long, and they're only doing 120 uh, patients, and the amount of grill items, that takes up more space than we could have used for um, a cold mise en place station. Um, also, in consideration of the right size grill, understanding demographics and making sure that you do have a a population you're serving that may have um, a vegan or um, um, well, a vegan uh, approach to other dining and you do, do not want blood interspersing or being their product being cooked where a blooded product was already cooked, having a split grill might be a very good idea uh, to having one for um, vegetarians and one for non. Um, and there are parts of the country where there will be a higher uh, predominance of folks who are vegetarians um, and that, it, that needs to be considered in the design feature. Um, as we all know, <clears throat> fryers are on their way out pretty much in healthcare. Uh, there are some places that are still holding on to them, but they can actually be eliminated on, uh, on the lines that we design uh, using a very high quality combi oven and products that are specifically designed by manufacturers for the oven that come out with a fryer flavor uh, are available, even if something as simple as French fries. We can make French fries that taste like they're deep fried, 99.9% .9 there, um, but they don't have the fat uh, uh, component. So um, 
in design a line. We don't have to stick around and hold on to the old vestige of a deep fryer. We can, in fact, get rid of it uh, and do the healthy uh, do the healthy menu approach, which is going to be um, state, state, uh, stated as important um, and non-negotiable probably in about two years or less. So our goal uh, through all this process is to create fresh food. Uh, the eye appeal, uh, the first impression, again, between uh, the call center making the call and creating that impression, when this food is in front of the patient, it has to have that eye appeal, that first impression uh, is the critical goal. Uh, this is a breakfast plate, obviously, we're looking at, and this has not been photo retouched. We actually put this together with products right off the line. Uh, a double garnish. People forget garnishes or use a token garnish, but not using a double garnish. Very important you have that representation on there because it does, in its own way, contribute very positively to the visual appeal of food. Um, even the plate size, as you'll notice, this plate here is not your standard plate. We actually have a smaller plate here um, at South Regional. Most facilities are still using a 9-inch plate, but even with a 9-inch plate and your uh, heat-on-demand systems that you may be using, having a wider rim plate making the, the center of the plate area smaller diminishes the need or for an employee to fill up the empty spaces when a patient um, may not order uh, a full meal because in room service, it's what you want when you want it, and a patient may not want all this food. So employees many times feel uh, compelled to fill up the plate and take up the empty space. So a wider rim plate, you have 9-inch, uh, is certainly the way to go. In Lori's case, we started off with a smaller plate uh, that diminishes the need to, again, fill the plate up with food unnecessarily, and that's usually a function of over-portioning. So the next step, the food has been prepared. It's coming through the window. The staff can reach across easily and get their product. Uh, now we're ready to fill the tray and complete the process of tray assembly. Colors, shapes, and sizes all contribute to visual appeal. Um, black tray and black domes are affected by hard water, which is prevalent throughout the United States, and they get dingy and faded looking quite quickly. Um, the scale that, uh, that, that's uh, att uh, is attracted to the plastic uh, surface really takes away from that appeal, that visual that the patients are going to be getting. So we recommend going with a gray or tan tray and the supporting equipment as well, because it does not have the same uh, impact uh, by the hard water. On the tray, clutter is a killer. So as you notice in the bottom right, uh, well, the center, the center bottom of, the, of, this, uh, of the slide, you'll see a little black dish, a plastic black dish that is very expensive, but it organizes all the condiments uh, and all the loose pieces so that they're not just rolling around in the tray. Very important to keep the tray neat and clean uh, that's also very important for the patient um, that the clutter takes away from all the hard work you put together. Um, tray mats, very important. Um, tray mats, um, Lori's tray at the top uh, top area, you'll see some writing up there uh, between the applesauce and the apple juice. Uh, that's probably the second area I would, uh, I would encourage a, um, a customer to use that space for marketing. But the primary space really only is below the napkin. On the, on the top right corner of the slide because that's the only place that there won't be serviceware. And if you're trying to send a marketing message when the napkin and silverware are put into use, that's the only space that you can really see a marketing message. So I would advocate that you just try and dedicate your marketing message to that one particular spot. So, and I just uh, wanted to pass, Bill, I just wanted to pass along to the audience that um, in this month's food service director, uh, in their trends section, there's a, a whole article about, uh, it's entitled, The Tray Matters. You know, elevating tray presentation helps make food more appealing to patients. And this is a, uh, it's documenting a site down in Oklahoma, Jackson County Memorial Hospital, where their patient satisfaction went to th from 38 to 93 percent. And one of the things that they credit for that is a, a good tray and an appealing looking tray a quote from the uh, chef there was, uh, people eat with their eyes first. And I, I thought that was an interesting uh, comment. That's correct. Um, and so whether it's the tray itself with dingy looking colors or when you lift the lid up, people eat their eyes first. And that if, they, if it doesn't attract them or appeal to them, they may not even taste the food, which may be fantastic. So 
that article is, is certainly worth reading. Uh, that bolsters, you know, the, the comments that Mike and I are both making. Then we load in the cart. <clears throat> um, hospitals are divided up into zones. Uh, the zones are principally for the prime time feeding, 7 to 9, 11 to 1, and 4 to 6. Uh, the carts are staged at the end of the line. They receive the trays once they've been verified for all the appropriate uh, items off the expeditor's ticket. Um, and those are putting the carts for dedicated zones. Um, during the non-peak periods, there may not be a need for keeping all those zones in effect, um, and they will then merge zones for um, efficiency with logical locations and groupings. Key to equipment would be an eight-tray cart. In most facilities, eight trays is plenty. That keeps the carts moving. Uh, Low-profile carts, because, again, we have staff who are uh, principally female and about five foot five, five foot six tall, you, the cart, they need to be able to see over the cart. Um, low center of gravity for those carts to reduce tipping. Uh, our top rail, as you see here in the picture, allows us to put items on the, on the top of the cart and minimize them falling over. Um, the timer keeps uh, the whole process in, in, uh, on track. First tray in, timer starts 10 minutes, whether it's prime time or after hours prime time. That keeps that cart and those products moving so we maintain our temperatures and our delivery time. And as you notice, um, uh, left of the uh, timer is a little plastic box. Simply stated, it's a uh, fishing, a fishing toolbox um, or tackle box, uh, and that, that we use to keep all of the condiments and all the extra um, condiments and uh, items that a patient might possibly want. Uh, therefore, they don't have to wait for our staff to bring it back from the kitchen. Lori, do you want to talk a little bit about this, the whiteboard you've got in the kitchen? And maybe, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, we put up a whiteboard when we implemented room service, and we, we keep a marker there. And it's for any of our team members or any of the management team to go over and write down any kind of positive feedback or comments we may hear from the patients when we're delivering their meals or rounding on them. So um, this is a great uh, way to share with the cooks and the, the support staff that works behind the scenes that never get up to the patient's room to, to see that not only are the patients, you know, developing a good rapport with the call center associates and the hostesses, but they're also recognizing that we've got some very talented cooks that are working down in the kitchen and they cannot believe how good the food is. So we really want to take that opportunity to uh, share that information with uh, the cooks and some of the other support staff who are working in the kitchen. Yeah, I love the comments. Said this was the best food ever. Yeah, we hear that all <laughs> the time, all the time. Call, they call us a four-star hotel. Many, many good compliments. Oh, that's terrific. And Bill, yeah. I know you you were uh, yes. you were impressed by this comment. Yes, this, this jumped off the board at me. Patient in room 631, daughter said, if anybody complains about our food, they need a spanking. Now, what's interesting is the daughter made a comment, if anyone complains about our food. In other words, the patient and her daughter, they now have taken the ownership of the hospital and by extension it's food. So our food, uh, they, be, they are self-patients, they're self-owners, if you will, uh, and it's the fact that they said they need a spanking, of course, that may be indicative of living in the South. But, you know, yeah. that's a, a powerful comment that certainly resonates as to why Lori is in the, you know, 99th and 100th percentile uh, in scoring. So congratulations to Lori's staff and her, and her people. Uh, those comments continue to come in. I'm sure they have a new board that's created uh, uh, more recently, but mm -hmm. I have no doubt with that kind of a score that they're not getting those continual comments. Yes, we sure are. And those comments are important to put in your kitchen um, because it, you're motivating your staff. Um, as the comments come in, it's important to post it, round the staff up, have a five-minute huddle, and say, look, guys, all your hard work, look what it's getting. You know, congratulations to you. Get your boss downstairs once in a while. Let them lead the meeting and point out these great kind of comments that you're going to post on the, uh, on the board like this. It's a very inexpensive way to really motivate your staff. Mm -hmm. And I know some sites will, I know we've done, in previous webinars, we've t done some tips and tricks slides where 
uh, some sites actually put a comment card on the tray and let uh, let patients uh, uh, comment to the kitchen in that way. Get that rather than taking that verbally and rounding or something like that, they can mm -hmm. actually write them down and, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, send them back with the with the tray. Yeah, or like here, what they'll do is they'll see their tray ticket with their menu selection on it, and they'll write a note on their meal ticket and then send it back down with a tray. Oh, nice. <laughs> Low tech. Yeah. So um, another part of room service uh, included with our room service program is the tray monitoring program. And um, what this allows you to do, it's easy to use. It, it uh, gives you uh, tracking capability for your trays uh, as well as metrics uh, to measure um, how, many, how many carts you're, you're moving about the hospital, how many trays you're delivering, how many uh, runners or uh, room service assistants you have, what kind of timing are you are you getting for those runners in while they're in progress? Uh, how quickly, are you, on average, are you getting your uh, trays to the patients? And uh, the tray monitoring program allows you to um, to actually monitor that right in the uh, right in the in the uh, kitchen area. So as you're moving out the door with a cart, you promote that cart to being in transport. And, and uh, the, the added benefit of having tray monitoring is that uh, you're able to uh, cut down on the number of calls down to the call center because along with tray monitoring, there's also a nursing unit display, which uh, now the, the nursing unit can actually pull up uh, a display within tray monitoring that will show them all the various patients on their floor and the status of their ordering, so whether or not they've ordered for a particular meal period, and then the status of that tray if they have ordered. So it would either show not ordered or it would show uh, trays, you know, uh, tray still in kitchen uh, or tray in cart or tray in, in transit. And, of course, by having that information, if a patient uh, is asking about where their tray is, they can provide that feedback without having to call down to the kitchen. And I know we've had lots of comments from clients saying it's drastically reduced the number of calls from nursing about trays and also cut down on their uh, duplicate trays. So they're not sending additional trays because they think they may have missed that tray. Bill, do you want All to? All right. Delivering carts, okay? The food left the kitchen, it's coming upstairs. As I mentioned early on, it's an, there's, there's up to 12, perhaps maybe more, a little bit less opportunities for patient interaction. This is another one. Of course, we're going to have our two identifiers when we enter the room, but this is a chance to uh, create a, and bolster that positive engagement with the patient um, um, by the delivering of the cart and delivering the tray to the room. Next. Diabetic patients, uh, this is a, a two-part uh, commentary myself, and I believe uh, Lori will comment as well on the technology she's using and the response she's gotten back from the local health department. Um, but, of course, we all know that diabetics is a very big and growing segment um, of our patient um, population, and a room service plan must have clear objectives and policies in place to support uh, the patients and make sure that we cause no harm. And in this case, Lori has a very uh, solid plan, which has gotten some very positive recognition. Um, Lori, would you uh, share that with us? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, when we were communicating with the nursing and the physicians right before we went live with the room service, you know, their major concern, the question that we heard the most was, how do you handle the diabetic patients? And we guaranteed them that um, they were very much a top priority that when the patient calls down, um, our call center associates remind the patients to let their nurse know that they've ordered their meal so they can give them their insulin. And then when the call center associate is done speaking to the patient, they'll turn around and call the nursing unit to remind them as well. So that's a second reminder to let nursing know. And then the final Perfect. reminder is this card that we put on the tray right before we put it into the cart. So when the hostess takes it from the cart to deliver it to the patient, they know they need to stop. It's, a, it's the third and final check with nursing to see if they have given them their insulin and if it's okay for the patient to eat their meal. And we happened to have a, a Joint Commission visit here last spring, and the Joint Commission surveyor um, did a food tracer. They wanted to follow our hostesses up to the 
unit and um, observe them delivering the meal. And this particular surveyor that was with us noticed this card and she fell in love with it. She was very impressed. She felt like it was best practice and asked if she could take one with her so she could share it with her team and in other hospitals. But they were, Joint Commission was very, very impressed with this uh, procedure that we were using with our diabetic patients. Congratulations. Thanks, Lori. Thank you. And uh, one other uh, uh, check for, uh, or really rather more of a teachable moment or an educational moment, is that on the tray slip that's on the tray, uh, so we've coached the patient through ordering, whether it be at the bedside or in the call center, uh, and then uh, and tried to recommend foods if they're if they're watching their carbs and trying to limit the amount per meal and we're we're tallying that by day, but when the tray slip finally does come up on the tray, it shows them exactly uh, how many carbs they're going to be consuming if they if they uh, eat that entire tray, uh, and even you know totals that number so they can track uh, their their carbohydrate con consumption. Uh, based on their stay and hopefully uh, uh, put some of those practices into place and and use the same kind of tracking when they when they get home. Any comments, Bill or Lori, on that slide? I think it's a wonderful educational tool for our patients. I mean, they really learn how to better manage uh, their diet, and it it's reassuring to the call center associates. You know, all the information is on their screen. And so they don't have to second guess what, what they're doing, and it also expedites um, the services to our patients. Exactly. Most of room service exceeds uh, all the teachable moments that we could possibly have offered or hoped for mm -hmm. in the old trail line environment. Yeah, and we really like our patients to take the menu home with them because it's a tool that they can reference if they go out to eat or when they're eating at home. <laughs> Great Perfect. tool for our patients. So, Lori, I think you were going to talk a little bit about uh, teaming up with nursing. Yeah, um, one very important thing that we did, it, it took a, um, some amount of time, but it certainly paid off. But we made sure we were um, keeping nursing in our communication loop from the day we did the feasibility uh, study till the day we went live and, and afterwards. We made sure that uh, we were going to the nurse leadership meetings on a quarterly basis to um, keep them filled in as to the status of our project and the direction we were heading and how some of our procedures were going to work. Um, it's a very, very key. We even went as far as to do hospital-wide uh, nursing in-services for the entire nursing department um, to let them know how room service was going to work and to give them the opportunity to ask any questions of us. You know, that took us about five days. We started at 6 in the morning. We went till 8 o'clock at night. The, the, we shared the uh, in-service times as presenters with the management team here in the department and the clinical dietitians. They were very engaged and became very involved as well. Um, we presented to the medical staff at one of their monthly meetings and gave them the opportunity to ask us any questions about our procedures or any decisions we had made about room service. We um, pulled in our marketing department. Um, they helped us write all of our um, in-house marketing material, our commu in-house communications. Um, they designed the menu, and Bill, you spoke about it earlier, how important um, you, you don't have clutter, the font size. Our marketing department was right on the money with that. Um, plant right. operations, they're, they're critical because um, you, do, you do a lot of um, changing mm -hmm. of equipment and utility needs. But I, communication is very important. And the, the sooner you start and the more you do it, um, everybody's your advocate and it, 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 it goes so much. It, it's very smooth. I mean, we had very, very minimal issues. Well, the nursing piece is very uh, important before we go off the slide is because um, whether you're on press gainy or any other kind of measure metric, um, if you have a, um, a non-select population once you're into room service, that's maybe somewhere between 20 and 30 percent, um, you're not going to get the scores that you have been promising administration you would get with room service. We have to get nursing involved to be sure that they move folks 
uh, and understand the policy procedures that we would drive them to uh, and partner with them on uh, that takes uh, more patients into the liberalized uh, menu program and allows them to um, be on the select process uh, and takes away some of the misgivings some nurses may have. So we have to make that partnership work because we need more folks on select uh, and the policies that govern why they're on and why they're not on. Um, some nurses still fight that um, and we have to make sure they're, out, they're our advocate. Yeah, and when we started room service, about 15% of our patients were non-select. Yeah, so you oh, okay. start off. Yeah, Great, place. that answers one of the questions that we got in our chat line already. Okay, so, good. Yeah. Um, well, let me make a point about that. Because of the number of slides and the dialogue we're going through and the number of people uh, on this call, we're going to capture all the questions that are being posed, and we encourage everyone to do so in the uh, um, bottom right corner of your screen where there's a Q&A area. And then we will then send out the uh, questions and the answers to all those questions to everyone who uh, has signed up for today's uh, webinar. So scripting at the bedside. Uh, scripting is one word. Mike, there you go. Uh, scripting yep. is one word, but engagement is a little bit better. It's more uh, personal. Again, another opportunity for that engagement with the patient and sometimes even the family members. Um, when we're at the bedside, um, that's the opportunity for us to sell up the food. Uh, we know it's good. Uh, we know it's presented well. Uh, the tray is, is not cluttered. It's organized. But we need to say, my, isn't this delicious? This is one of my favorite meals. There are ways of educating our staff to conduct themselves very much similar to a waiter or a waitress at a good restaurant so that the patient also buys into the fact that this is a great meal. We need to excite the guests about that meal. Reminding them, um, and this is often forgotten, but reminding them that the, that the medicines that the patient is on, although our host hosts may not know it, but they can make the comment because it's very, very common that the medicines patients are on can have a detrimental effect to the taste of the food. So we need to remind them about that because while it looks great, it smells great, we're talking it up, when they try it, those medicines may affect it and diminish the, the expectation they have, but as long as they understand that the medicines are on could affect it, it gives us, again, another fighting chance to be sure that they respect our food and give us the high marks that we work uh, very hard for. Also gives um, you a good chance to work with them to try to find something that might be uh, more pleasing. Mm -hmm. Well, again, with the uh, advent of the medicines, uh, anything they eat might be diminished because of the uh, effect it has on their taste buds. Sure. Um, this is another chance to offer to assist the patient um, once we have uh, lifted the lid up, if, we, if they want us to do that, open any containers for them. Sometimes uh, these PCs we have are challenging to get opened, so that's another offer to, um, to help them. Um, and before leaving the bedside, offer, may I get you anything else? I have the time. Um, so they know that we care about them and we're, we're there for them. And then closing out by saying enjoy your meal. Uh, often we uh, follow around staff and they forget to make that closing comment, but while it's understood, it needs to be said. Yeah, and then Bill, the one thing I want to add, um, you guys probably noticed the coffee cup on the tray. Um, we have uh, the small little coffee pots down in the kitchen, and when a patient orders coffee, we get one of the smaller coffee pots and fill it up with fresh brewed coffee. Then when we get up to the floor outside of the patient's room, we pour the coffee into the coffee mug. So it's very fresh and very hot. That's it right. Also, great idea. money on lid. Yeah, great yeah. idea. Yeah. So the, I was just going to say this. This next slide just is kind of a tag on to the tray monitoring uh, application. So we use a wireless mobile device to um, actually type in the tray number, and it immediately is entered into the software system as a delivered tray. And so now that information is available on, in the call center. It's available to any hostess that is looking at that's at, that's at bedside uh, taking orders, and also in that unit display, that nursing unit display uh, screen that I mentioned previously. So the nursing supervisor or anybody looking to see if uh, that patient's tray has arrived would uh, it would indicate now that it had arrived and it was delivered. So, Bill, do you want to talk about tray recovery a little bit? Absolutely. Okay. Now that folks have been fed, we left the room, they're enjoying their meal, uh, they understand, you know, all the uh, elements behind it. Now we come back, yet again, another opportunity 
uh, for engagement. Every single opportunity that we have has to be, uh, and I'll use the word for it's worth scripted, because each, each, way, each time we interact with the patient, that's a, um, it requires a different dialogue from the very first phone call to the tray delivery to the tray pickup. All these things require a slightly different comment from the uh, host hostess to the patient to continue to foster that relationship. Um, as you'll see in the uh, left and middle slide, there's a little um, magnet that uh, we use to uh, put on the door frame, and that tells the host or hostess and the nurse that there's still a tray in the room. So when they're doing their floor sweeps, uh, they know that there's a tray that needs to be picked up. Why is that important? Because all the hard work we've done to create these relationships, uh, great scripting, uh, well-designed tray, tasty food, when a tray is just in the room for two hours after the patient's done eating and, it, and they're sitting there looking at it, it's on their bedside table, that would then uh, take away from all the work that we've done. So we've got to be sure that we have a, uh, a solid um, tray recovery program as we're sweeping the floors post a meal, and this makes it very simple uh, to d identify rooms that still have trays. And yeah, there and is there is a report in tray monitoring that does just that. It's a it's a, a soil tray report that tells you how long a tray has been uh, in the room since it's delivered. So it's easy to access that and and check the rooms where you really need to get up and and pick up that tray. And I'm just going to keep moving on here, Lori. Go ahead and comment while I. Uh, oh, cycle sure. the slide. Sure. Um, one other thing I wanted to add about the about the magnet, it's a great visual cue for nursing. They can, you know, just look down the hallway and they'll know which one which patients have to re receive their meal. Then they don't have to exactly. walk all the way down the hall into the patient room to see if exactly. they're eating. So it's a huge time saver for nursing. So we've now completed almost the full cycle. The trays have come back downstairs into the dish room. Um, but is this the end of the uh, room service experience for the patient? Mike? No. Actually, it's not. <laughs> the answer is no, um, because, yes, uh, the patient's been fed, but uh, often we forget about rounding um, and having not just our, if we have ambassadors or other, other key employees who go up and visit patients, getting management upstairs, getting the chef upstairs in their chef wipes, the manager up there, even uh, having your your um, your direct administrative boss in tow, going around to visit the patients and talk with them, getting their feedback, showing that you also care about the patient experience and getting direct feedback from them has huge impact. And you can always ask nursing, even in a wonderful room service environment, there will be patients who struggle for any number of reasons. Those are the ones that need a little more love. So we can contact nursing and saying, who needs a little extra TLC? And maybe those folks we go see because it might move them from either negative or mediocre to happy and positive by us coming in and rounding and talking with them. And I want to give Lori a chance to recognize her team a little bit uh, at South Regional. Sure. Um, what you see in, in this slide is pictures of my management team. And I just want to add that having a great management team is just it's key and I'm very fortunate I have a, a group of very dedicated managers and we um, all worked on this equally hard as far as getting the project implemented and, and done um, we each took a certain piece of the project and we, we'd meet weekly we'd have timelines as to when we needed to get everything done um, if we needed to call experts in the in the industry we did that and then we made sure that we spent um, quite a bit of time educating and training our staff. So when we, we brought our coaches in the day before go live, they just had to do a quick review, and we were ready to, uh, to go with room service. And rock and roll. Very, very well. That's right, <laughs> rock and roll. So we never want to go back to the old tray line. <laughs> That's right. Hey, um, as Bill mentioned, we'll, we'll uh, get to those questions on the chat and return those. You can also, we're going to put up an email address at the end. Uh, I want to make sure that, uh, I want to make sure that, uh, we get to the, the last slide where we're giving you the email address and Bill for you to have a chance to, um, yep. to ask the questions for the scholarships, for five scholarships. Right, right, right. right. Uh, remember everybody that a, a well-designed room service program should generate 
on average, $100,000 in savings per 100 beds. Uh, that, of course, needs to be quantified. So here are the questions, um, and there's two of them. What should be on your first room service menu? What items should be on your first room service menu? And the second question is, why is it so important to have scripts or engagement standards? Again, what should be represented on your first room service menu? And second question is, why is it so important to have scripts or engagement standards? You can send those to me on the email listed right there. And I'll tell you what, let's let's take a few of the questions in the chat line, and I can just uh, facilitate these, I think. One from Linda Shopka, she said, when Self had a, a score of 69, what type of meal service were you using? Uh, selective menu, non-select, different mode of room service? Um, Lori, can you respond to that? Yeah, um, we had a one-week uh, select uh, patient menu, and we used BME, uh, the bedside menu entry, to take the patient's menu selections. Okay. And then uh, I think this one is also for you. Uh, the HCAPS does not have questions regarding patient satisfaction with food. Uh, what specifically are you scoring 100% on? Well, that is our overall HCAPS score, and even though there's not a question about food on HCAPS, the one question that we take very seriously in my department, and which is critically important to our nursing staff, is um, overall responsiveness of the um, hospital staff to your needs. And with room service, we make some some time frame commitments to them. We we make the commitment to have their meal to them within 45 minutes. We uh, have a PI goal of, of answering the calls when they call down by the, the third ring. So, you know, room service is pretty key to um, helping the hospital score high and responsiveness of overall staff. Mm -hmm. I hope that answers Thank you. the question. And then there's a question on how many patients can one, and we're uh, trying to be sensitive to everybody's time. We realize we, we've gone two minutes over here. Uh, we'll take a couple more questions here, and then uh, you can email those questions to either Bill to those email addresses on the screen here, either Bill or Stephen Crumrin. And uh, Mike, and I thought that we were going to have, we were going to capture those ourselves and send out uh, one email with all the questions and all the answers. On on the, uh, you mean from the emails or from the chat? From the chat, we're going to capture those questions and then we're going to then, uh, create the answers and then email them out to everybody uh, who signed up for the webinar today. Sure, that's fine. Yeah, and I think that's that's a good di idea as we've started to uh, go over and we're starting to, to lose folks. But I did want to thank uh, both Bill and uh, Lori for participating today. It's been, a, I think, been a great webinar. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the photographs and thank to our marketing department for, for uh, putting those together and Tanya Vanessa uh, uh, specifically. Um, so uh, with that, I'm, I'm going to say Happy New Year, everybody, and, uh, and Bill and Lori, you can feel free to sign off, and, and thanks again. It was a, a wonderful uh, hour spent with both of you. Yeah, thank you, Mike. I'm, I'm thanks, everybody out there. Part of it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye -bye. Have a great day. You too.